Oh, okay. True. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce uh, today's speaker, uh, Shi Wu Yang. Uh, he is from uh, uh, Beijing International Center for Mathematical Research of, uh, of uh, Peking University. And uh, Shi Wu is uh, uh, she graduated from Princeton in 2013. Then he went to Cambridge University for, uh, for three years. And, and then he came, came back to a Peking University. He's now a assistant professor at uh, Peking University. And uh, he's, uh, he's a young expert on uh, <coughs> uh, mathematical relativity and uh, related topics. So, so today he will tell us about the uh, uh, semi-linear wave equations. The title of his talk will be a asymptotic decay for semi-linear wave equations. This will be a joint work with uh, Dong Yi Wei, is, uh, who is also at Peking University, who was my former student. And Shu, please go, on. go ahead. Okay. Hi, uh, thanks, uh, uh, thank you very much for the kind of invitation and uh, uh, introduction. And also, I would like to thank I, I would like to thank Professor Tian for the kind of invitation for the for presenting my our, our recent work. And also, I would like to thank the organizers, in particular Daniel, for all the uh, kind help during the whole process. So, uh, my topic is uh, already uh, introduced by uh, by Professor Tian. Uh, we're going to talk about something re uh, recent progress on the on the asymptotic decay for thermodynamic wave equations. And this is joint work with uh, with Song Yi Wei. So let's begin. What what uh, what is our uh, equation? Uh, so uh, so we are talking about very simple model, of the, maybe the most simplest, uh, maybe the simplest model of the nonlinear wave equations. And the left hand side is just the, the linear operator, and the right hand side is a very simple uh, nonlinear term. And this term is uh, uh, has a has a, has, a, has the uh, the feature that I mean uh, is is it it comes from the uh, uh, low uh, and Order Lagrangian equations, so it has a energy conservation, which is a, which is of, of this form, and the sign is going to be uh, the constant mu is going to be uh, uh, we, we always normalized to be to be one or minus one, and this uh, minus one corresponding to the focusing case, and an example of this form you can uh, keep in mind is so it's like a star, and because a star the matter is concentrating, and finally it will, it will, it will in the end of the day it will form a, a black hole. And this is corresponding to, to this form. And uh, the other one is when mu, is, when mu equals to one, and this is going to be the default case. And the uh, example one can consider is, is our universe, because our universe is expanding. And uh, in this case, you can, you can think that you can, uh, you can imagine that it's something uh, spreading out. And uh, uh, same, uh, uh, same terminology also appears in other types of equations, like, like uh, Langlinear Schrodinger equations or philosophy equations. And from the uh, mathematical point of view, we can uh, we can see, we can see this uh, properties from uh, from the conservation of energy. When mu equals to minus one, both this part, this is potential energy, and this is collective energy, and both these two parts can uh, can grow simultaneously, and they can uh, imagine that maybe some something bad can happen. But contrary, when mu equals to one, both these two parts are are uniform bonded, and you can uh, uh, and normally nothing. I mean. Bad things cannot happen in this case, and this equation admits a very simple scaling symmetry, and uh, that means if a V is a solution, and you can scaling this solution by uh, by times uh, 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 lambda to the power t over p minus one, and you also scaling the uh, the time and uh, and also position, and this V normally is uh, is also uh, a solution of the same equations. So when you're talking about this scaling symmetry, you can also talk about what is a, a scaling invariant critical sublob norm. And this is, uh, uh, this is invariant, this, this norm is invariant when sp is equal to d over two minus two over p minus one. So when sp is less than one, this is corresponding to the energy subcritical case. And in this case, normally you can, uh, you can, you can control the long-end terms by the, uh, uh, by the energy. And in this case, one can construct local well post list for the, for the solutions, uh, for the equation, that means if we're starting with something in the energy space, you can uh, construct a solution locally in time. And uh, this time interval depends only on the size of the initial energy. But if, a P, but if SP is exactly equal to one, 
And we know that in, the, in this case, the, uh, the, the embedding, I mean, the solved embedding, and this, this is a, a one, one, one SP exactly equals to one. And this embedding of this term uh, by the energy is, is, uh, is not compact. And the, in this case, I mean, you can, of course, construct local solutions, but then it's time depends also on the linear profile of the solutions. So, uh, but for the, uh, not, I mean, when, when SP is bigger than one, that's, that corresponds to the, to the uh, energy supercritical case. And nothing too much is known for, for this case. But uh, I mean, the smaller the case is okay, because I mean, when, when the, the data is small, I mean, the P is larger, is better. And in this case, it's easier. And also people can also construct, uh, and can also construct global solutions with large critical subload norm. And uh, using very different methods, like uh, like the, the, the method of Krieger and Sherlock, I mean they used the uh, they they making use of the self similar solutions to construct this global solutions with large critical uh, solvable norm. And also there is a work joined work with uh, Jonathan Luke and and Sanjin Oh, and what we used is making something uh, very similar to um, to uh, I mean we're using a technique that 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 the wave is large. In, uh, in the transversal direction and small in the outgo outgoing direction. And we can also construct the same, uh, same result, uh, uh, derive the same similar results that for supercritical wave equations, we, there exist large uh, global solutions, but with large uh, critical subload norm. But in fact, they don't work. The, the, the critical subload norm is in fact the infinity. And there's also work of a uh, software and also uh, aims at constructing global solutions with large critical subload norm. And, and his method is using a, 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 a harmonic, harmonic analysis and uh, constructing something which is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, only in uh, high frequency. And that's, uh, that's uh, what he, he did. And there is another resource, a uh, very uh, striking one, was due, to it was due to tau. And uh, what he proved is that for some systems with in high dimension and with large power p, and the, the system uh, uh, um, blows up infinite time for smooth electrical data. So uh, normally people believe that maybe for, even for these single solutions, for single equations, the solution may also uh, blows up infinite time for, for, for some, uh, uh, for smooth uh, data. And this, uh, there is a very, um, another breaking through results recently supporting this, uh, this expectation. With this result was due to uh, Murrow, Raphael, Rodinowski, and Zebtel. They proved that, I mean, for particular dimension D and the power P, and for the super uh, energy super super critical case for the nonlinear nonlinear short term equations, and for smooth data and the local, smooth localized initial data, the, 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 the solution blows up in finite time. So uh, it's also believed that it, this uh, blow up the result results also holds for the wave equation, but this is re remains uh, remains remains still remains open. So uh, so basically, what what is left for uh, people can can study is. Uh, is a is question arising from uh, from from, uh, from energy critical or energy subcritical case. So let's see first what is the result for for the focusing case. For the focusing case, it's very easy to construct finite time blow up solutions, and because you can uh, you can simply find a, a sort of OD time blow up. That is, if you if, if you see this special solutions Bt, and this is, depends only on on time t, and you will find that you will see that this verifies these equations, and if using uh, sort of cuddle functions, and then in view of the finite speed of propagation, you will see that this, uh, if you're uh, prescribing electrical data on the quality hybrid service of this data, and this solution must blow up at time t, capital T. So this, uh, this, uh, that, that means for, uh, for a focusing case, uh, uh, the, 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 situa the situation is much more complicated. There is only a, a one, but one interesting case that is, uh, that uh, uh, draws a lot of people's attention is for the focusing energy critical case. Because in this case, it also exists as some sort of a stationary solutions that is independent of time t. So, uh, so for this case, I mean, uh, you, you get a elliptic equations and you can find uh, an explicit solutions for these equations. And uh, in fact, I mean, this solution is, is, uh, is exactly the one that achieves best constants for the solid matter. So, so, and of course, you can also, uh, 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 I mean, from this solid, uh, ground states solutions, you can using this Lorentz transformation, you can get a family of, uh, of, uh, of uh, ground state solutions. And in uh, striking results by uh, Kelly and Merle in 2008, they proved that for data below this ground states, that is the, the, the energy is below this ground states, then they can show that the solution is, is, uh, exists globally and also scatters in the energy space. So this is basically because 
of the rigidity of this uh, uh, ground states because the solution in, in this case is uh, strictly some, uh, is uh, uh, scaling invariant. So basically, if, you, if it, there is something bad happen, you can blow it up, and uh, when you blow it up, this uh, this should be this, this should be something like this, like this ground space. But because your energy is conserved and the energy is below this ground space, so that that ex, ex, uh, ex, uh, excludes that it excludes out the the, prop, uh, the possibility that the, the solution blows up in finite time, and that's how I mean global existence resolves holds. And what is remaining case is what happens for the general data. So let's say the data is uh, has energy uh, above the ground states, and that is uh, the, the the remaining uh, big open problems and proposed by by uh, a group of these people. And the the code is uh, as a certain resolution conjecture, which means that if for general solution general data, you are you're studying this uh, uh, energy critical focus equations, and you want to study what happens for the uh, long time behavior of the solution, whether the solution blows up in finite time or whether the solution decom um, decomposes into several traveling uh, oscillators. So, so this is the, the, the whole story for the uh, focus in case. So what is left is what happens for the, for the uh, thin focus case, which seems is much easier. And in fact, for the critical case, I mean, uh, the, the people has already completed understood what happens for the thin focus in energy, uh, energy critical case. Early in 1989, <coughs> Struwe showed that for the three-dimensional case and with uh, spherical symmetry, the solution exists globally. And later, I mean, Grilakis extended the results to, uh, to, uh, to dimension up to five and remove this spherical symmetry. And what, what, what his method is, is to show that the solution is, in fact, uh, pr uh, persists the regularity property. That means if, you're, if the solution is smooth, if the data is smooth, then the solution stays smooth for all time. That, I mean, as a consequence, the solution cannot, uh, cannot blow up in finite time. That's how I really like to prove the low regularity for the, for the solutions. And I mean, following this road, I mean, people can, can extend this results to, to, uh, to a dimension up to nine. And why there's a, a dimension restriction? Because I mean, when, when D is larger, this P, this power P is smaller. So basically, I mean, this low regularity results cannot hold because you cannot take any, any derivative. Of the, of the equations. But in 19, 1990, I mean, Kapitansky also proved that the, the existence of unique global weak solutions in the energy space for all solution, uh, for, all, you know, for all dimension. But of course, I mean, people are expecting that, I mean, this, this should be held true for, uh, for, uh, for, um, for, the strong, uh, for the strong solution, at least in the energy space. And this was finally addressed by Shada Stuwe in 94. They proved that, I mean, the solution of this energy critical case is uh, globally well posted in, uh, in, in energy space for all dimension. And Bahuri and Girard also prove, show that the solution should scatter in the energy space by observing that the potential energy decays to zero. So this is a, a whole story for the, for the default for the energy critical case. So what is remaining is for, uh, for, the, uh, for the energy subcritical case, for the default case one. So in this case, as we said, I mean, the, the global well posted is easier because I mean, you can, in this case, you can always prove the local uh, web possibilities for the solution in the energy space. And because in this situation, the energy is conserved, both the kinetic energy and the potential energy are, are, are uniform bonded, you can, you can easily conclude that the, uh, the, the solution is global. But, but this method cannot tell you anything about the long time behaviors because the global solution simply follows from the uh, conservation of energy. But people believe that, I mean, because the linear wave decays in higher dimensions, and also because the potential energy and, and the kinetic energy are, are uniform bonded, you can always expect that a solution should not behave bad, be, uh, behave bad, and the solution or some part of it should behave like a linear ones. But this is, is not true in dimension D equals to one, because in uh, the one dimensional wave does not decay. And in fact, in 19, uh, in, uh, just, just several years ago, Linda Blah and Tao, they proved that the solution verifies a sort of average decay estimates. That is, if you take the L infinity norm of the, of the, of the uh, solutions and you integrate from zero, uh, time t, zero to time t, and then you divide it by t, and they showed, they showed that this, this uh, actually goes to zero. So this means that, I mean, the solution in dimension d equals to one cannot uh, behave like a linear ones in, uh, in, in a long range. 
But in higher dimensions, I mean, people, uh, uh, I mean, uh, people, I mean, one thing that people can prove, can, can study, is let's say for the point wise decay estimates for the, for the lower dimensions. As we say, I mean, as still, I mean, as we said, I mean, point wise decay estimates only available in lower dimensions because in higher dimensions, the P, the, uh, the P cannot be too large. So basically, it cannot take much higher derivative. That's why I mean, you cannot get the point wise decay estimates. But in lower dimensions, you can always uh, 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 trying to see what is the decay rate for the, for the solutions. The, another direction of the long time behavior that we can study is the scattering theory. So, uh, so scattering theory completed ones consists of constructing a wave operator and also proving asymptotic completeness. So let's see uh, what is uh, the results that we have. For the, in the direction point-wise decay estimates, I mean, this is the, the early work starting from uh, uh, dating back to Strauss in 1968. And he proved it. He proved that in dimension d equals to three, and it was a, a super conformal case. And we come back to later and what is a super conformal case means. But this p is restricted to the case when uh, between three and five. And he proved that the solution decays uh, in this rate. And keep in mind that in three dimensional wave decays like uh, t to the power minus one. And this is a, was, was improved by uh, later by Wall to uh, uh, just a, a minor improvements for the, for the point wise decay estimates. And build this box. In, uh, 10 years ago, they derived this sharp decay estimates. So, uh, so, so this, uh, uh, so this uh, sharpness comes from the, the, the rate in, uh, in terms of t minus uh, the, the absolute value of x. But of course, I mean, all these results are restricted to the case of uh, when p is bigger than three. So, Peicher in 1982 and also Glassy, they they, uh, they derived some some sort of some sort of estimates for a smaller p that that covers part of a uh, a sub case. So this is P is less than three, and he, he get some sort of a, a very weak decay estimates in terms of, of, of T. And in dimension T equals to three, they prove that the solution decays as fast as linear ones when P is bigger than five. So, so five is just as conformal inferent power in, in dimension T equals two. So that means when P is bigger than five, the solution decays as fast as linear waves. Because two dimensional waves decays, uh, the, the, the decays like T to the power minus, minus one half. But when P is smaller, I mean, they have, the, have the, uh, other uh, decay rates. So of course, this decay rate should not be uh, should not be sharp because I mean, you see, uh, this power is very uh, it's not a very simple one. I mean, as we, uh, so 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 definitely, this this uh, estimates can be uh, can be improved. So the scattering theory. So let's first talk about what is a complete scattering theory. And uh, this, the main thing of this is constructing a one-to-one -one map. In some weighted energy space. So, in 1987, uh, Gilbert and Bello they proved that it, for the dimension d equals uh, greater or equal to two, and also the range is, is super conformal case. So this power is, is, is exactly the conformal inference power. So you know, when d equals to th uh, two, uh, three, this is exactly corresponding to uh, to three. Uh, uh, this is exactly three. So this is also the result of early result of Strauss. And the space that they considered is a weighted energy space. So when gamma equals to two, this is just a conformal energy space. So that we call this is a uh, uh, conformal energy space. And when gamma equals to zero, this is exactly the classical energy space. And also base Siegel Joe, they, uh, they're using this is using uh, uh, conformal transformation techniques to uh, uh, and update and then showed the same results for the special case when D equals to three and P equals to three. So this case is, is in fact, is a conforming invariant, invari uh, the equation is conforming invariant in this case. So, uh, so uh, uh, using this conformal transformation, they can easily prove that, I mean, the solution uh, is, uh, um, you can construct this uh, uh, wave operator in the, uh, in the weighted energy space, weighted uh, uh, conformal energy space. Now, of course, I mean, the, the, the question is how we can, uh, we can go beyond this uh, uh, conformal power. And there is uh, some extensions by Hidalo in uh, about 20 years ago uh, uh, in lower dimensions and, and, and uh, has a lower bound smaller than, than this one. <clears throat> so, of course, I mean, uh, uh, normally, I mean, it, it's much uh, uh, hot, difficult to, to construct, to prove the complete scattering theory. But if you want to consider this scattering theory, the first step is to show some sort of uh, asymptotic completeness. That is, you, you compare the, long, the uh, nonlinear solutions to linear ones in a long range. So in the above ones, mentioned results, I mean, the, the asymptotic completeness is measured in this sense. That is, this B plus is, something, is some linear solutions, 
and this phi is the this is nonlinear solutions of the equations. And when you compare this uh, compare this one to the linear ones, you're taking some derivatives, and derivatives is uh, is all the rotations and the scaling vector fields, and also para translations. And then measure this difference by uh, by your L two norm. And when you take in the limit t goes to infinity, this goes to goes to zero. Now of course you can also measure measure the, the, the difference in other space like the, the just the simple, just the, uh, the the energy space that is you only consider the the um, the factor the derivative by the parallel translation and uh, based on the point wise decay estimates Petra showed that I mean the when p has this lower bound and in dimension d equals three and when d equals to two this p has this lower bound the solution scatters in the energy space in in this uh, in these two dimensions. And of course, I mean, the problem for, for this result is that this space is too small because you have, a, you have in, in, uh, imposing too much uh, assumptions or conditions on the, on the difference. This space is too large. So, uh, so maybe the, so, so of course, I mean, maybe if you want to cons uh, consider the right, the, the complete scattering theory, the, maybe you need to find some, some, some right space. And this comes in the, the intermediate space of a critical solar space. And uh, there is a re result several years ago by Shane. And what he proved is that is, that is for d equals to three and for the super conformal case, but with the spherical symmetry, the solution scatters in, uh, in the critical solar space with data in, uh, in this weighted energy space. So this weighted energy space is between the classical energy space and the conformal energy space. And of course, another motivation for, for using this kind of a critical solar space is, uh, is due to a grid is due to a very uh, brilliant results recently by, uh, by Donaldson. What he proved is that this equation, the same equation as, as we, 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 uh, we put it here, uh, is globally well posed in the critical solar space, but, with, uh, but still in the, with a spherical symmetry and restricted to the case when, uh, when, when, when p is bigger than three and, uh, and less than five. And there is a still uh, open, remains open what happens for other P and water and whether this spherical symmetry can be can be removed. So let's see uh, what what is our 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 uh, our, our new resource. So in higher dimensions, let's say in dimension d equals greater equal to three, what we can prove is that for for all p, we can prove some sort of integrated local energy decay estimates, and also we can prove some some sort of uh, uh, energy flux decay estimates of this form. And this p we have a lower bound. This lower bound is one plus two over uh, d minus one. So this is uh, much more or less than the conformal power that we that we uh, we have introduced before. Now, what uh, and this this result is is, is telling us something like uh, like the energy flux decay. So this sigma u, so this is some sort of hypersurface and uh, uh, which which is away from the light cone, and the u is the, the distance. This means that when your the hypersurface is away from the light cone, it decays in terms of the in terms of distance. And much more important is the some sort of a decay estimate for the potential energy. So this b plus P, uh, so, so this is integral in the whole space time, and this gamma zero, we assume that it's bigger than one. So basically, this b plus is one plus t plus r. So this is a, so this is some positive weights, and this tells you some sort of decay estimates on the potential energy. So as a consequence, what it can prove is that when p has this lower bound, so you don't need to so you don't need to, uh, to see what is the lower bound, but you only need to keep in mind that this lower bound improves all the lower bound before. And this gamma zero has a, has a, uh, so this this bound is is ensure that this the existence of this gamma zero, and then we have this uh, uniform space time norm of the solutions, and uh, as a consequence, the solution scatters both in the critical solar space and also in the energy space for uh, for all the for, for for data merely in the in the weight in some weighted energy space in uh, with, with with gamma zero. We also have some sort of pointwise decay estimates in, uh, uh, in, in dimension d equals to three, and our lower bound for p is uh, is almost like a two point five, and so this is also improves improves p, p, uh, previous ones, and the previous results only holds for the sharp decay estimates only holds for when p is bigger than three, and we can prove that the feed decays of this one, and uh, because we, as we see that a three dimensional wave decays only like one plus d to the power minus one, so this is a, what we call the sharp decay estimate of the solutions. And for p bigger than two, we also have uh, some some uh, weaker. Uh, uh, we also have other decay estimates. So so this uh, so this result of here, I mean, cannot 
uh, used to, to, to study the solutions for, for when, when, when P is even smaller. So let's say P is bigger, is less or equal to two. And for less or equal to two, our results is, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, but there's also a consequence, I mean, for, for the point-wise decay space is, uh, is our improvements on the, on the scattering on the, just in the energy space. And we can improve the lower bound for P to uh, bigger than 2.35. So this is, you know, I, I don't think this is sharp because I mean, this is simply solving sort of a polynomial and uh, this is, uh, uh, maybe this results, results can also be uh, improved for, uh, for even smaller, smaller P and uh, just in the uh, scattering the energy space. So the point-wise decay estimate for P less than two, we can uh, also have, a, have some, uh, we, we need to use some other methods and we can, we can, uh, we can uh, show that. For P is bigger than one and less than equal to two, we can show that the solution has this uh, sort of uh, control. So this does not decay for even smaller P, but we found that, I mean, when, uh, if you just consider the outgoing non curve, that is T minus X square, I mean, uh, uh, X square, uh, absolute value is constant, then this decays. So which means that along this outgoing directions, the solution decays. But if we're restricting ourselves to the case when P is bigger than square root two, I mean, we have this uh, point-wise decay estimates for the for the for the uh, for the solutions. So uh, so basically, this is uh, uh, if you consider this critical case when p equals to two, and this decay rate is consistent with uh, with the one we uh, we we get we get it here. So what is uh, what is what happens for the for the uh, one-dimensional case? So one-dimensional case is uh, is uh, is much subtle, as we said. I mean, the the, the one-dimensional case is totally different. From uh, from the higher dimensions, and uh, uh, Lindeberg and Tao can only prove some sort of, sort of weak decay estimates. That's, that is the average decay estimates. And in their papers, they also considered that the solution should decay uh, with the inverse polynomial rate. So that means decays in terms of t. So uh, we so basically we have a, we gave this a uh, an affirmative answer, and we proved that for uh, the solution for all p, and the solution decays with this rate. So when p is bigger than one, this this is this is uh, this rate is uh, is uh, is lacking. And then what happens for the dimension two? So dim dimension two is uh, uh, as we said. I mean the, the method uh, we will see uh, we will see later and why the method does not work for dimension two. But for dimension two, we can we can uh, get much better results like the potential like the point wise decay estimate of the potential energy decays in terms of t and the decay rate is uh, is a uh, uh, minus two a uh, p minus one over two, and then we also have this, this kind of point wise decay estimates for uh, for the solutions and the, the lower bound for when, when when the solution decays as fast as linear waves is when p has a lower bound uh, eleven thirds. So uh, remember that the before, the previous results can only prove this sharp decay when p is bigger than five. As we said, I mean, when, when, for the bigger, when p is bigger than five, everything is, uh, is completely understood. And what happens is what, what happens for the solution to smaller p. And for the other, all the other p's, we can also have this sort of uh, decay estimates. And this, this results leads to the uh, scatter, scattering results in the critical solar space. And uh, when, when p is bigger than one plus square root of eight, and uh, scatters in the energy space when, when P has this lower bound. So all these results improve the uh, uh, previous ones. So let's see what, uh, what is, uh, uh, how we can, uh, um, uh, how, I mean, why we, uh, we can improve, improve these results. And, uh, and uh, uh, so, 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 uh, so, so, so now uh, we begin to talk about some sort of, some, something about the, uh, the key ideas of the proof. So let's begin what is, uh, what is, uh, the previous results, uh, uh, the, what is the measure for the previous results? So all the previous results relies on the conformal energy identity obtained by using this conformal vector field as multiplied. So you just times the equation by KB and then you integrate it by pulse and you'll find this kind of uh, energy identity. You don't need to worry about what, what, what is a Q0, but you, uh, but you only need to uh, keep in mind that this is long active. And the important thing is what happens for, for this potential energy. This is what we, uh, we, are, we, are, we are caring about. And you'll find that this is something weighted energy on at time t, and this is some weighted energy at the time s. And so this is the error term caused by the long linear term. And this is space-time integral. And there's, there's a very important uh, coefficient here. And this coefficient is, uh, is, uh, uh, depends on the dimension d and also uh, on the power p. So you'll see that when p is exactly equal to d plus 3 over d minus 1, this is vanishing. So basically, you have this uh, 
conservation of uh, some weighted energy, uh, some weighted energy. And this power, d plus three over d minus one, is exactly the conformal invariant power. So that means you, if you're doing this sort of a conformal transformation, the equation is invariant. And that's why you have this uh, uh, conservation of, uh, of a conformal energy. Now, of course, when p is bigger than this one, so this is conformal inferent power, and when p is, is, uh, is above this conformal uh, inferent power, and, and uh, so this is corresponding to the, to, um, corresponding to the super conformal case when p is bigger than that, and you can easily conclude that this is conformal energy is uniform bounded by the right-hand side. And uh, you can derive simply, um, quickly derive the, the decay of the potential energy. And this is sufficient to conclude the scattering and the point wise decay estimates for the solution for the super conformal case. So that means for the super conformal case, the problem is, is, uh, is easier. So the problem is how we can go beyond the, uh, the, uh, the super conformal case. So the, the, so the idea is that we can, um, so in this case, this term is selective. And of course, we, what we hope, what we uh, want to do is to control this term by, uh, by this one, by using some sort of a, a broad loss inequality. That's the that's, that's basic idea. So what we can do is to define this sort of a weighted energy, weighted potential energy, and uh, this prefers conformal energy identity implies that this GT is, is bounded by the, this is the electrical data, and this is the coefficients moving, so just moving this term to the right hand side, and uh, you can get this kind of inequality, and then you can using uh, Grolo's inequality, you can, you can show that dt is bounded by g0 times t with the with power. And remember that there's a t square here, so basically this concludes that this potential energy still decays for a for certain range of p. So this is the key estimates, how people can go beyond, a little bit beyond uh, the, the, the subconformal power. So basically, the idea is how we can improve this kind of decay estimates for the for smaller p. So this, uh, so this, so, so this is basically the idea. And the improvement is that uh, so uh, so so now we 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 understand that the reason that why this prefers results is not sharp is because they are using some factor fields with too much weight. Because I mean, this energy identity is obtained by using this conformal uh, factor field. This conformal factor field, you can see, you can uh, you can call this is with is with uh, is with order two. That means the weight is uh, is t square or r square. So basically, uh, if you want to improve this time decay, and you what you need to do is to use some some factor fields that are with less weight, and that comes in the the, the Liu method of Rodinowski, uh, and, and Rodinowski about ten years ago. Uh, what it, what is the method is, uh, is is that they want to prove that. So, so, so prior to this approach, and what people do is using this t equals to constant slice of the of the of the space time, and because of the energy conservation, you can using some sort of weighted solar space, uh, weighted solar embedding, you can prove the decay estimate for, for the solution. Now, there's another new approach is is, is to um, realize the 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 the, uh, the the philosophy that for the hypersurface of this red ones, so this is light cone, and we we know that the wave is traveling just along this line cone. So basically, I mean, when, when the hypersurface is away from this slide cone, this energy flux through this, this uh, red ones should decay in terms, of, uh, in terms of distance to the light cone. So the problem is how we can realize this, uh, this velocity. And in their, work, in, their, in their work, and they proposed a very general uh, approach. So this, uh, this uh, uh, decay estimates of the energy flux follows from three basic energy estimates. The first one is the, sort of the integrated local energy est estimates. And you can use some sort of vector fields of fr to r as a, as a multiplier, and this is actually very uh, uh, is actually very uh, widely used recently for studying wave equations on, on black hole spacetime, and this dates back to 1960s by uh, by Morawitz. We also call this for this types of estimates by uh, as uh, Morawitz estimates. Another one is uh, the, the the conservation of energy used, uh, derived by using the Killian vector field dt as a multiplier. The new one is uh, is r is a is a vector field of this form. So this weight is R P, and the P, this P can be can be between zero and a two. That's how we can narrow down the weights, and you can uh, uh, get the, the 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 right the the, uh, the desired results of our uh, of, of what we are expecting. So the role of this vector field is played is that it, it can characterize why the wave 
traveling around the light cone. That's the, that's the key point. And this is also why we can expect that the solution, the, the energy blocks through this light cone, uh, through this hypersurface decays in terms of uh, the distance to the light cone. And then using, uh, so you have, if you have this kind of three kind of uh, estimates and using a sort of a pigeonhole argument, you can prove that it's uh, energy blocks through this hypersurface decays in terms of the, in terms of the, uh, of the distance to the, to the light cone. So let's see how, how this new, um, a new method can be applied to the, uh, to, to, to study the, uh, some sort of the semi-linear wave equations. So we're using this factor equals r to the power gamma and a dt plus dr and apply to the equations, we can get a sort of identity. So of course this identity is, is, is a little bit complicated and also depends on what kind of region you're choosing. But you only need to keep in mind that everyone is uh, non-negative, except that this, uh, there are two constants. The first constant is C gamma D, which is given here. And the other constant is CD. This is uh, only uh, depends, uh, depend, uh, depends only on the dimension D. And, uh, and the right-hand side is on the elliptic hypersurface, and the left-hand side is, uh, is in the whole space time. So, but you will see that, I mean, this method only works in, uh, in uh, D equals to three, because I mean, uh, uh, D is greater or equal to three, because I mean, when, uh, for the other, for, let's say for D equals to one, uh, you will find that this is zero, this is good, but this term is it's not good because this gamma should be bigger than one. This is uh, uh, why, uh, why um, this method does not work in dimension D equals to one. And for D equals to three, uh, this, this coefficient is selective, and uh, this, this method also fails in uh, dimension D equals, to, D equals to three, D equals to two. So, so let's see uh, how we can uh, we can prove the decay estimate for, for the for the potential energy. So this Leo method can show that this energy blocks. So this is some sort of outgoing long, long hypersurface. You can you can imagine that this is just the, this hypersurface, and this Leo method can show that this energy blocks decays in terms of the distance u to the light cone, and you can integrate in terms of u, and you can get a. So this is hyper, the the energy blocks through some sort of a, a hypersurface. And what we have to do is to uh, to integrate to get a spacetime integral, and this spacetime integral is going to be uh, uh, integrating in terms of u, and you can get a spacetime in integral of, of this form. And then you combine this with uh, with this uh, r weighted energy estimates with r r weights, r weights, and then combine these two, you can uh, you can uh, you can get uh, uh, the, uh, the the main result, the, the main estimates of the of the theorem when uh, when when the potential energy has this sort of a decay estimates. Now, we'll see why this method improves the, the previous ones. So if you want to, if you, if you want to make the, 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 the new method effective, we have to require that this gamma is between this range. So this requires that P has this lower bound. And uh, the previous one, using this uh, uh, um, conformal kinetic factor field, we have this potential energy decay, and this decay rate is of this form. So uh, we also uh, already, already uh, uh, obtained this um, before. So, so this is a decay estimates of this one. This is the previous ones. So what is the new ones? The new ones, so of course, our, uh, our decay estimates is a space-time integral of this one. But if we're just comparing the decay rate, counting the decay rate, you have fixed time t, and this decay should be, uh, should be comparable over to, to this one. Now, this gamma can be as large as d minus one times p minus one over two. Now, the condition when p is less than is subconformal because as we said, the superconformal is already understood. So we are only need to consider what uh, the, the, the subconformal case. When p is less than this one, this condition is equivalent to saying that this gamma is bigger than the absolute value of this. So that means this new method may improve the time decay of, uh, of, of, the, of the potential energy. And that is uh, the main, uh, the main uh, new improvements for the, for the higher dimensions in D is greater equal to three. So, so this is uh, the whole story for, for the, for the uh, crew for the higher dimensions. And uh, as we said, I will, we also explain what happens for in lower dimensions in D equals to one. I mean, this, this measure fails. And then when D equals to three, because this constant CD is selective, so it also doesn't work. So the key point for the, so for the uh, one dimensional case. So let's, uh, let's just uh, comment what is the proof for the one dimensional case. For the one dimensional case, I mean, uh, let's uh, just say something about the, the, the results of Linda and Tao and what they, the, the, the key estimates of their, the, of their work is, uh, is some sort of a weighted, is some sort of potential energy decay 
on some parallelogram. So, uh, so this is derived by using a vector field v dt plus dx. So this v is some sort of constants and determine what is this parallelogram is. And um, once you have these estimates, the average decay follows by using some, the classical rather modules differentiation theorem. So, uh, so basically, they're using a very technical uh, theorem to prove this average decay. Now, our point-wise decay estimates in terms of t is uh, uh, is uh, so. So, uh, I'll give you another expl explanation why uh, why the one-dimensional decay is much harder. It's because in so we'll see that I mean the the, the, the conformal power is d plus three over d minus one. So in one dimensional case, this means that the, the, the conformal power is in bulk is, is, is when P is equal to infinity. So this means that a one dimensional case is not only energy uh, subcritical case, but it's also a subconformal case. So, so that's why I mean the, the method in previous in higher dimensions cannot be used in one dimensional case. It's also saying that you're not able to use flexor fields with Higher ways, I and mean, this is our our experience. Uh, uh, our uh, this is our experience. I mean, uh, saying that if you want to improve the decay estimates and they want to, to study the equations for smaller p, you're not able to use uh, factor fields with much ways, and that's that's how uh, that's that's uh, that's the key point. So in one dimensional case, we're not even allowed to use factor fields with with higher than one. That's the key point. That that's force us to to use some 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 uh, to use some factor fields of this form. So, uh, so basically, I mean, this alpha, beta are constants and are positive constants. And this uh, uh, one plus, uh, and we're, we're of course, we're re restricting to our case when, uh, when the, uh, the absolute value of x is le less, than, uh, less than t. So that is the inside of the cone. Outside the cone, you can use some first standard uh, multiplier like, like the uh, Lorentz rotations, and you can, you can easily prove the decay estimate of the solution. But of course, you can also assume that the data are compact supported, and you can just restrict ourselves to the uh, to the uh, to the um, interior of a of a forward light cone. And this alpha beta has to verify some sort of a, uh, relations, and this uh, one over alpha minus one times one over beta minus one should be uh, equal to uh, uh, four over p plus one square. So, I, so actually, I uh, uh, I think this is a, should be uh, should be a uh, 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 less than that, it's okay. And then if we're using this kind of a new multipliers, it can get some sort of weighted energy uh, estimates and the point-wise decay estimates then follows by using our sort of a, a, a sort of a weighted calculado Lirenberg inequality. So this is a, it's a, big, it's a key idea of how we can uh, improve the results in a uh, one dimension case. So what happens for the two dimension case? As I've said, I mean, the, the reason why the measure doesn't work for the two-dimensional case is the constant CD is not uh, uh, is not positive, so so this this uh, uh, makes the 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 the, the, the technically in higher dimension completely completely fails in dimension two. So um, the new ideas of the two-dimensional case is that we're using some sort of, some sort of a factor field that is not spherical symmetric. So so you see. So our experience is that let's say even for this new method or or, or even previous ones, and or even let's say the, the conformal Killian vector fields are all spherical symmetric. So basically this is depends only on R and not on let's say X1 or X2, X3. So our new observation is that you are using or trying something non-spherical symmetric. So we're using some sort of vector fields of this form. And this U1 is the T minus X1 plus one. So, and also we are applying these vector fields not to cones, but to hyperplanes. And this vector field allows us to allows us to show the, the time decay of the of the potential energy. So of course, I mean, you, you, if you see that, let's let's compare compare to um, uh, sorry, let's compare to this ones uh, to uh, to this ones. We we may find this gamma is two uh, d minus one over p minus one over two when d is equal to this exactly p minus one over two. So basically, this result is consistent with higher one, higher dimensional ones, but just we're using fewer different, uh, different uh, methods. And the point one decay estimate for, for, uh, for all P follows from, a, for, uh, follows from a, a sort of a type of logarithmic solid embedding. And this was due to uh, Bridges uh, and Galloway and Weiner. So uh, uh, 
actually we we come out this uh, in quoted ourselves but uh, just uh, when, uh, when, we, when we put our our paper on archive and uh, dr professor rupert frank pointed out that pointed uh, to us that I mean, this estimate already appeared uh, in, in an earlier work of uh, bridges so we call this uh, bridges Golov and uh, Werner uh, estimate in, in quality. So finally, let's uh, let's comment uh, what happens for the uh, for the proof in uh, uh, just uh, one minute, uh, less than one minute. What is proof for the for the for the case three-dimensional case, but with smaller p? As we said, I mean, all the method the methods the RU methods only works in p for p in three-dimensional case for p is bigger than two, and for less than two, the still the, the problem is still the same. We're not able to use factor fields with weights bigger than one. We have to use some some sort of uh, uh, factor fields with weights less than one. And we were tried all the uh, uh, factor fields, spectrosymmetry factor fields, but that didn't work. So just, just inspired by the, our work in dimension two, we're using some factor fields, long, uh, 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 long spectrosymmetric factor fields of this form. So this U is T minus X1. Still, we're applying this to some sort of a uh, region bounded by cones and also bounded by hyperplanes. And uh, uh, this factor fields, you see, when P is less than two, this power is less than uh, is less than uh, p minus one is less than one. So so basically, this this weight of this factor VOC is less than uh, is between zero and one. That's uh, that's the key point. And uh, this is uh, the backward light cone, and we uh, we can obtain some sort of estimate of this form. So these estimates are now are not able to prove the decay estimates of the solution. But the idea of this uh, of using this long spherical symmetric factor fields is that we can use in some reflective symmetry. That is, we can we can change the, the coordinates system the x1 to minus x1. So if this estimate holds, and when you change it, changing the, 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 the sign of the, the x1 direction, it also holds for the, for the uh, when you're taking, when you're changing the sign. So basically, if this holds, then you can, so this r0 is also the, the, the x1 direction, and you change the sign of the corresponding x1 direction, and you also get a, 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 an, estimate, an estimate of this one. So you combine these two, and that's sufficient to, uh, to conclude the, 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 the bound for the one dimensional case. So uh, I think that uh, I just uh, uh, extended a, a two minutes and, uh, and I think I saw it here and, uh, and thank you very much for, for your attention. Uh, thank you, Ashu, for, for this nice talk. Uh, so any questions? No question? It's so clear, huh? <laughs> so uh, maybe I ask one. So so Shu, so it's uh, so it is a sharp decay estimate in dimension one and two, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, what about high dimensions? So uh, high. Uh, so basically, what? Uh, yeah. So 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 uh, so. So the high dimension, uh, so the pointwise decay es estimates only appears in uh, in lower dimensions. So we don't know whether our decay decay estimates are sharp, but we just come out some sort of a time decay in uh, in terms of t. But uh, um, but uh, let's for but for the, as for the scattering results, we are we are considering that that it should host, for, let's say, the solution decays in, in terms of let's say uh, goes back to to the main theory. So for this kind of scattering results, we hope we. We, we conjecture that this, this lower bound should be one plus d over four. So that is the corresponding to the mass critical case. And uh, so this range is between one plus d over four and uh, one plus uh, four, sorry. This is between one plus four over d and uh, one plus between uh, one plus uh, four over d minus one. And because I mean, this similar results holds for uh, floating equations and also holds for klein gordon equations, but uh, we don't know what, how to, uh, goes goes to the critical ones of uh, one plus d over four. There is no other uh, evidence or, re, uh, or, or or evidence how why this is true. But I mean, if you're thinking about the solution is linear, just linear ones. I mean, uh, it should be uh, uh, the critical ones should be the sharp ones should be one plus d o, uh, four over d. And uh, in this case, we we, we conjecture that the solution should should decay in the critical solar space and also energy space, and all those other solution decays as fast as the linear ones. So everybody, so it's uh, if you have a question 
for uh, for Shi Wu. You, you can raise your hand. Uh, it's uh, it should be somewhere you can click on. So, so raise your hand by clicking uh, some button on the, on your screen. No question? Uh, Zihua has a question and permission to talk. Uh, is there someone is raising a question? Yeah, Zihua has oh, permission to speak. Zihua, okay, please. Hello? Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, I, I have a question. Um, it, is it possible to uh consider the focusing problem for example below the ground state construct the uh, uh time point wise decay solution for for relatively large data i don't know i think this is a very interesting question because i mean for as we said i mean the i mean the you mean the critical case or energy uh energy subcritical case um any 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 case but but uh but i mean for this for the Maybe I think critical ma case. Maybe energy critical case. Oh yeah. So uh, right, because in this case you have a you already have global solution. I don't know. Maybe this is very a very a very very interesting problem. But because I mean, so basically our idea is is that using some uh, summation of the solutions equations derive some sort of a time decay for the potential energy. That's that's how the all the uh, all the results based on. Uh, but if our, but if our, the signs change the sign. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe 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 yeah. Maybe 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 it works in in somewhere, but I don't know. Okay. But so 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 there is no uh, result of this type. As far as I know, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Any more questions? No, I guess. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess uh, so far no for the questions, and uh, so let's thank. Uh, I guess we don't know. We cannot applaud. So thank the speaker again. So for his uh, wonderful talk, and, uh, and I like to remind you. There's a coffee break after this, right after this, and. Uh, I guess uh, Daniel, do you want to say something about the coffee break or? I yeah, guess okay. Everybody got the information. So, <laughs> so to get okay. To, to coffee uh, yeah, I say some few words. Okay. Uh, thanks again for the speaker and thanks for the chair, gang, for chairing this beautiful last seminar. So, this was the last okay, seminar okay. before yeah. the yeah. mid semester break. And we will resume on the 31st of August. And with a with a talk, and uh, yeah, I hope you join us now for the coffee break after this talk. So you should all have received a link uh, and a password to the coffee break. Thank okay, you. Okay. Also, I like well, since this is the last talk, as Daniel said, we let also thank uh, Daniel for his uh, organization. It's uh, I'm sure there are a lot of work, and uh, he did. Uh, I think he did a wonderful job. So I guess we were. See all of you in uh, at end of August, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, thanks, 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 Daniel, for for your no, uh, thanks, my pleasure. <laughs> effort and uh, all these uh, wonderful work. Thank you. Okay, I close the session now and uh, hope to see you in the uh, coffee break. Bye. Okay. Bye -bye. Thanks, thanks, you. Thanks, Daniel. Thank everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.